Can we take everything that we learned about presenting our message, bundle it up, and present the power of God through our voice? That's what we'll talk about today. I will tell everyone about your righteousness. All day long, I'll proclaim your saving power, though I'm not skilled with words. Psalm 71, 15, NLT. Today, we're going to complete our conversation about the book from T.D. Jakes, Don't Drop the Mic, The Power of Your Words Can Change the World. We've talked before about presence and practice and gone through talking about the gospel. I think a lot of times we prepare for work presentations, other types of presentations, but then when it comes to telling the gospel or sharing our story, sometimes we're not as prepared as we could be. And in this chapter, we're going to have to realize we're speaking the message of God. We're going to try to have an impact. We're going to try to tell it from the heart and be authentic. But we also have to do it in such a way where we reach people. He reminds us that our presentations should be timeless. It's hard to engage people throughout time, but we want to make sure we're not just speaking to one group of people or another. We're not talking to the young people. We're not talking to the older people, or we're not talking to the 80s generation or the millennials. We want to talk to everybody. And so if we make our presentations timeless, if we make them in such a way, first of all, technology-wise, he mentions, we want to make sure that our message goes on, whether we're using social media or using a particular technology, we want to make sure that that technology also lives on. But we want to speak in a way that will mean something to everyone. I get a little bit leery. I talk about Star Trek and some other things that if I place it in a generation or I place this at a time, there will come people that will never watch it. And even if you quote something like a TV show, there's going to come a time when the people have never seen the TV show and now you've lost them. By making our presentation in such a way that we can reach everybody, we'll do a better job of getting people of every age and every cultural background. And so focusing on making ourselves timeless, I think culture rich, you know, we can do that. We don't want to just be dismissed as this age or this group of people, we want everyone to hear our message. So by making something, I think, too trendy or making something so old or untrendy, you pigeonhole your conversation into only it being attractive to one group of people. He says, too, don't think about the size of your audience. If you're just speaking to a few groups of people, it's okay. I know that everyone wants to speak, well, maybe not everyone, but a lot of people want to speak to a large group of people, have a big impact, hear the voice of what he's saying going out to a whole group of people. But it doesn't matter. Sometimes Jesus spoke to large groups of people and sometimes he spoke to one person. The impact of your message shouldn't be based on the size of the groups that you're talking to. They'll say that in podcasting all the time. I'm a fairly new podcaster. I've been doing this now for three years with my other podcasts. This podcast just hit a year. And you think, wow, you know, when you're starting out, such a small audience, should I keep going? Should I keep doing this podcast because it's so few people? But people will often remind you to say, if you were talking to this group of people who showed up to listen to you speak at a local club, would you just not show up? Would you decide that you're just not going to come because the group is too small? Jesus never considered the size of his group, and I don't think we should either. We have an impact on one person or a hundred people. It's great all around. He says he calls this uh, tilting your mirror. Sometimes when you have something to say, saying it directly and saying it in such a way that it really grabs people or maybe feels a little bit too focused at people can be a little bit hurtful, I think, at times. We point our angle of whatever conversation we're having at a particular group. And he says that if we tilt our mirror away, we can be more effective, which means we're not going to blast whoever is in front of us. Hopefully we're not blasting anyone. But think about that example of David. And when he talks to the prophet and the prophet gives him the story about the man who's doing the bad thing, David's incensed because the mirror was tilted away from him. He could have just come and said, David, you're screwing up. Instead, he gave it an example and suddenly David realized, who he was talking about. In that particular case, Nathan addressed David in a way he could hear. 
and understand the story? Is there a way, too, that you can tilt the angle of the mirror instead of blasting someone? They'll get the idea. And I think that in this part, that was such a powerful statement that sometimes you can be direct and sometimes you can be a little bit indirect and people will still get your message. He brings up an interesting point. And again, he's giving this analogy of a recipe, whether you're using your grandmother's recipe or you're making your recipe yourself or it's a new recipe. As we tell the message of Christ, it always becomes new and fresh. You can imagine throughout the history of Christianity, almost everything has been said. Almost everything has been said in one way or another. And we're not going to invent a new angle on David. We're not going to invent a new take on something. But what we will do is bring it out through our perspective. It's our story. We're sharing it through our own eyes. And so we always will bring something to every story we tell. And that's the problem I see with people using AI to write things for them. It's not their story. It's not going to resonate with people because it's somebody else's story. It's not even a real person's story. It's an AI story. We can research information. We can gain new insight from something. But we're not going to invent a brand new story out of it. When we tell people our story or the story of God, even though it's been told a million times before, we're bringing it through our perspective. We are the first person who's us. And so when we bring that perspective to other people, it'll be more powerful with them. So you're not just going to take grandma's recipe. You're going to make it your own. And you're going to build on that legacy of the message that you're sharing with people. He says, quote, inherit and innovate. You're going to take that old recipe and make it new again, make it fresh and make it through your own eyes. He gives us some good advice with the quote, broad thinking galvanizes people which means when we talk in a bigger frame, we're not so closed in. And they talk about being niche down. You know, we're going to focus on a very small point. When we talk about bigger points, we bring people together. When we're getting common ground, when we have a giant point to talk about, whether it's salvation, it will bring people more together than talking about something very small and very focused. And he says that we should tell people about God that we see in our message. We're always going to have an idea of who we're talking to. I, I mean, I do on this podcast too. I think about who my audience might be, and I don't know for sure, but someone who wants to hear the gospel. And so I'm always trying to focus that message on that person, maybe someone a little bit like me, but someone who wants to be a learner, someone who wants to find out more, someone who wants to do better and try to Find interesting ways, whether they're in their productivity life with Start With Small Steps or their walk with God. In this podcast, I always try to talk to the person I imagine is listening to the podcast. He says that we should always think about that person, what their needs are, what they're looking for, and what we can bring to them. There are some people we probably can't talk to. They're just so different from us and they won't get what we're talking about. I think about like if a billionaire listened to my podcast, I don't know if we would connect. We would certainly connect on some human way, but our lives are so different. You know, maybe they need someone who can talk to them in a way they understand. I don't know. I'm just thinking about it. But you always have this thought in mind of who you're talking to, the kind of person you're talking to, and the kind of message you're going to give to people. I tend to be a little folksier. I'm not a... Uh, I don't have high elocution status. I'm not a Shakespeare. I couldn't read Shakespeare if I wanted. I'm not Patrick Stewart. But I talk in the way I talk, and I talk to the people I talk to. And that's what I'm going to have to bring to the table all the time. Grandma's recipe, not my grandma's, but I'm going to take the story of Christ. I'm going to take the message of the Bible. I'm going to make it my own. And I'm going to do it in a frame of who I think is listening to the podcast and who needs to hear the message. He says, also, we have to want it badly enough. We want to be able to share that message. If we have no passion for sharing the message, if we don't want it, if we don't fight for it, if we don't fight for our perspective and our speech, it's not going to go anywhere. If we're very bland about it, oh, hi, everyone. This is my speech. Hope you like it. Cool. You know, no one's going to dig into that. No one's going to feel you in that speech. You're going to have to want to do this. And sometimes, even if your message is unpopular, with who you're speaking to, 
it's popular maybe with God. Maybe you're saying the message that needs to be said because God is always about truth also. I think in the end, th this book is trying to communicate with people where they're at, how they're thinking, what they're thinking about. We have to realize that God has called us to share this message. He is with us when we share his message. And we have the Bible and prayer and his grace. We think, I can't be the spokesperson for God. I can't talk about the things of God because I'm just not good enough. I'm going to screw it up and people are going to be uninterested in what I have to say. But you always have to realize that in the end, the actions are Jesus. He's the one doing the work. I wrote an article once called, You Are the Telephone. We are the person who is just transmitting the message. It is God's work for us to do. And he fellowships with us. He lives with us in our hearts and in our souls. And he has called us to do this thing. So we have a blessed message. We have a purpose. We have a calling to bring this message to other people. And so we have to realize that Instead of this just being a speech, like you give a speech for work, it's going to be great. You're going to do a speech for work. You're going to present. You're in your little suit. Everything's good. This is going to be a little bit different because you're actually going to share the word of God from your heart in a message you've been called to say. And so you have to realize God is with me and I need to celebrate. Praise God. Be thankful for the gifts he's given me and the viewpoints he's given me too. Doesn't mean we're always right. Sometimes we screw up in our opinion, but we always have the word of God, that connection, that prayer life to help us clear our message up, to help us reach people. And even if we screw it up and we say the wrong things and we blunder in our words, we know that God is going to help us reach the person in the best possible light. My challenge to you is now that you've worked on a little bit of an elevator speech and you think about things that you want to talk to other people, Think about how you can bring that power of God's message into how you present, into what you're saying, into the miracle of the message of Jesus that has come to this earth, been brought to so many people. Is there a way you can partake in the great mystery and magnificence of God when you're communicating to other people? Everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know if you need any prayers or if you have any topics you'd like to hear. And remember, our step to reaching people through the gospel, through God's word, starts with small steps. Small steps.